In this video, I'm going to talk about the basics of variables and variable types in C. So variables are pieces of information that we use in our computer program. So if you think about, say, a video game where you have characters moving across the screen, we need to keep track of where those characters are on the screen, which is going to be represented with some number, some position. Variables help us to keep track of that kind of information while our program is running. And in C, we have to declare variables. We have to say, I want to make a variable called something, and it's going to have this type. So for example, we could say int position. And what this does is it declares a variable called position. And that's like the name for the variable. And then int here, int is the type of the variable. And we're saying that position is going to store int values. Now int values, int is short for integers. Integers are numbers like, say for example, negative 5, 0, 20, 512. These are all examples of integers. They're numbers that could be negative, 0, or positive, And they're numbers that do not have a decimal point to them. So there's no like 0.25. It's just a whole number like 512. And when we say int position, what happens is that in memory, a space is allocated to store an integer. And that space is basically given the name position for the purposes of this C program. And we can then store values in that place in memory. And this is called variable declaration. When we give that place in memory that's been created its first value, we call that variable initialization. And we could say then position is equal to 10. And what happens is 10 is stored in memory at that at that place in memory. And we have to put a semicolon there as usual. And that's variable initialization. Now you can actually initialize variables on the same line that you declare them. So we could say here, instead of in position semicolon, we could say in position is equal to 10 semicolon. And what this does is it declares a variable position that's an integer and it sets it equal to 10 all on one line. So we can do that as well. And we can print out these values too. I'm going to make a separate video on printing things, but I could say here printf and I could say position percent d slash n is going to put a new line in and then say position here. And this will output the value of position. So I could compile this program and run it and we're going to get position 10. So another thing we can do with variables when we declare them is we can declare multiple variables at once. So I could say here int x, y, z. And what this will do is it'll declare variables x, y, and z, and it'll declare three integers. And it's like in memory, you know, now we've got positions, we've got, we've got variables for x, y, and z in memory. And, and we've just created now these places in memory to store integers as well. And we could put whatever we want in these, in these variables. We could say like x is equal to two, y is equal to three, and you know, z is equal to four. And, and we can do this as well. And we could print these out. So we'll just print them out. We'll just say y, z, and percent d is just going to allow us to print out the value here. So I'll run this here. And we'll get, you know, x is 2, y is 3, z is 4. So I'm going to make a separate video on printf. But for printf, what's going on here is we're giving it a string to print something out. And we're now giving a placeholder here, which is basically saying expect another argument to the function. And this percent %d here means expected to be an integer, and then we're printing out the integer value there. And then here we have three placeholders. So we're saying print out x, y, and z. Percent %d, percent %d, percent %d means expect three integers as arguments, and we give x, y, z three integers as arguments, and we print out those values there. Now that's the int variable type. There's other variable types as well. So int can only store these, these whole numbers like this without a, without a decimal point. If we have real values, so like real values, real numbers, these are things like negative 2.5 and like 98.2 and you know 150.2. These are all sort of 150.4. These are all real numbers. These are numbers that have a decimal point to them, and they could have multiple decimal points to them. They could be like you know four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You know, we could we could want to store numbers like this as well. If we want to store numbers like this, there's two types we can use. One is called float. One is called double. So if I say here float and I say, we'll call it like my num is equal to, you know, 98.125678, that's going to be a 
floating point value that we've just created. And a floating point value, a float, it can store numbers with this decimal point here. And we could print out these values as well. So we could say like printf, and we could say my num. And I'm gonna say here percent %f now. Then I'm gonna say my num afterwards as an argument. And again, this printf we're using here to print these out just so we can see them. Percent %f is another placeholder. This one says expect a floating point value. And then when we say my num here, it's gonna output the, the number there. And so we can run this here and we get my num 98.125679. Now, interestingly, notice how the number we printed out is not identical to the number here. So I'll talk about that in one second here. Um, so that's that's a floating point value and floating point values can store these decimal points. So we said that there's also this, there's another type as well that can store numbers with decimal points like this. And that one's called a double. So a double actually stores numbers with decimal points as well but it stores them with a higher degree of precision. So what exactly that means is, is a little bit complicated and I don't really wanna to get too into it in this video, but essentially what happens when numbers are stored on your computer is they're stored as a series of zeros and ones. A double basically uses more of those bits. It uses more bits to store information and because it uses more bits, it can, it can more precisely store numbers. And we say that doubles have higher precision than floats. So it can more precisely store numbers because it uses more bits, it uses more zeros and ones to represent them. And that's oversimplifying it if you're you know, a professional programmer, but that's, that's, that's essentially what's going on here. So I'm gonna say here double, and I'll say like my double is equal to, and maybe we'll set it equal to the same number here, 98.125678. And I'm gonna print out my double now. When I print out my double, I'm gonna say LF for a double. And I, we can actually say LF here as well, to be honest with you. It won't actually make a, a big difference here. But but I could say my double now, and I'll print out my double. And when we run this here, notice how now the double, I'm getting one, two, five, six, seven, eight. So with the double value here, I'm getting the actual number printing out. And it's, it's oversimplifying it, but essentially what's going on here is that double values use more bits. They use more space and memory to store their values. And because they use more space and memory, they can store data like this with decimal points with a higher degree of precision than floats. And that's, that's floats and doubles. We'd use those to store real numbers like this. And then the other basic type is called a car. And car is basically short for character. And what a car stores is a character. So we can say here car, and I could say C, and I could say is equal to, and we could say Y. And now C is a character that is a, is a variable that's a character, and it stores the value Y. And I could say here, you know, printf, and I'll say C. So we'll output C, and I'm gonna say here percent %C. And percent %C is another placeholder that this one means output a character. And then I'll output character here. I'll put, I'll put the C here. And then we'll run this here, and we'll see what we get here. And I get that C is Y. Now, interestingly, with characters, so the way that characters work is that characters, like all things in all computer programs everywhere, they're numbers. So characters are a number. And what there is in C and in other languages as well is there's a mapping of numbers, specifically integers, to characters. And so this character Y here, it's actually a number. It's actually a number internally in terms of how the computer works. And C uses a mapping of those numbers to characters. And I'll just show you what I mean. So one of the mappings is called ASCII. And ASCII is basically an encoding standard. And it, the encoding standard basically means these numbers stand for these characters. So if you go down to here, printable characters, and you check this out here, this is telling us that the decimal number, like the normal number, the number 33 stands for the character exclamation mark. The number 40 stands for the character open bracket. The number 43 stands for the character plus. And you can see if you keep scrolling down, you know, we're going to have like A, B, C, D, all the characters, like all the regular letters of the alphabet, they all have an encoding as well, like 65 stands for A, 
and and why is the character is why is actually 89 and so we could actually mess around with this a bit what we could do is we could actually say that we're going to set a character to a number so let's actually try this out let's set the character y equal to the number 113 we're going to set it equal to the integer 113 and that should be a q so that actually should be a q so we'll give that a shot we're going to say and what do we say again i, I already forgot it that's bad 113 so we said 113 let's try that out we're going to say 113 and that should actually be a q so we open it up and we get a q and what's going on there is that characters are really underneath it an integer they're really underneath it a number and this is the mapping of numbers to the actual character that gets printed out and so just just be aware of that 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 cars and integers are not too different from each other and you know all these things that we've got here they're all just sort of being they're they're all just being stored in memory so like in memory there are places set aside for all of these things like c and my double and my num and they're all just places in memory that are set aside to store these values and the idea is that we can change these values over the course of our program's execution. So for example, here I've got X set to two, Y set to three, Z set to four, right? I could change those values. So I could say here, X is set to 10, Y is set to 20, and Z is set to 30. And I could change those values. I could, I could assign new values to those variables. And then I could print out the variables again here, and we're gonna see that the, the values of X and Y are gonna change. I'm just gonna comment out some of these lines here, just so that way we can just focus on the change to X and Y. But the idea of variables, you know, one of the reasons why they're called variables is because they can change over the execution of my program. So X, Y, and Z start off as two, three, and four, but they become 10, 20, and 30 because I change their values by assigning new values to them with what are called assignment statements here. And so this is what makes you know, variables important because we can use them to represent things that are gonna change as our program is running. Like for example, in a video game where you have all kinds of characters moving around, ultimately it really doesn't matter what, how complicated that video game is, ultimately there's some variable that represents that character and all those characters positions in the game and we use variables essentially to keep track of that kind of information and we can change those things over time so that way our program and its behavior and what's going on in our game or whatever it is we're making will change over time as well now with variables i've gone over the four basic types in c which is int float double and car there is more to it though just so you know so there's actually some, some modifiers we can apply to these called signed, unsigned, short, and long. And essentially what unsigned does is unsigned can make a number only the positive numbers and zero. So if we have a regular int, we can represent negative numbers and positive numbers. But if I use this unsigned modifier in front of the int, if I were to say like unsigned and say int, then what's gonna happen is that integer is only gonna be able to represent numbers in the zero to positive range, essentially. Short is actually gonna make it so that the number uses less bits. So it's gonna make it so that the int type that we use it with is gonna take up less bits than it would otherwise. And long is actually gonna make the numbers that we apply it to take up more bits than they would have otherwise but it's going to make it store numbers of a greater range. So that's another thing with variables as well. So the, these variables, they can only store number, numbers of a particular range because you only have so many bits available, only, only so many zeros and ones to represent numbers with. And therefore, we have a limited range of numbers we can represent. Now that, that range is actually fairly high, but you can use long to increase that range even more, and you can use short to actually decrease that range. Now, the only reason why you might wanna decrease the range is it would take up less memory. So if you knew that you had a bunch of variables that just didn't need uh, to have a large range because they were all very small numbers, you might use short because then that way you're using less memory. But just be aware of that as well, that there's a little bit more to it than this, but really, to be honest with you, if you're just getting started with C programming, just knowing about int, float, double, and car is enough to get going. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.